Have you ever thought about this thing? That your hands have five fingers. Your feet have five fingers. You have five primary physical senses of seeing and hearing and smelling and tasting and touch. You have uh, five foundations of Islam. Buniyal Islam or Allah Khamsin. You have five foundations of Islam. These these five fingers of your hand and these five primary senses, they are the pointers that just as there are five primary senses for observation of physical things, there are five levels of human reason for the coordination of the knowledge that you might get about the physical world, for the coordination of the experiences that you might get, you will have to distinguish between knowledge and experience, mind you. When you hear music, you get a sort of experience that is not knowledge, that is experience. You think? So, there are, there is a level in reason or intellect itself which coordinates the experiences of this material world. Then there is a level in reason which coordinates the experiences of the transcendental world. And when this, this reason, this human reason may be basically divided into two, the lower reason and the higher reason. Coming to the higher reason, that higher reason is assisted by five senses which are the inner senses. And this is the teaching of all the teachings. Al-Hawasul Batiniyah, the inner senses, and they are five, just as these senses are five, and their stations are one, two, three, four, five. There are five inner senses, and these inner senses function in cooperation with the higher reason, which some people call as intuition. These primary senses, they actually work in the field of knowledge in connection with this material world. Because whether we pursue physical sciences, the knowledge in the field of physical sciences or the knowledge in the field of social sciences, it is all on the basis of these five primary senses that we have. The function of these senses is to send reports to the discursive reason which is there inside your brain, if you, if you might think it like that. And there these percepts are converted into concepts. And the concepts are converted into principles. And the principles are converted into values. And there you get a value system. This is the way. This is the way from these outer senses. But there is a way from the, through the inner senses. The way which works through the inner senses, it functions on what may be called the transcendental beam of the human personality. The human personality has a mundane beam which is five-dimensional, which works on the five primary physical senses. The human personality has a transcendental beam which works on the basis of those five inner senses. Then every one of these five inner senses has five dimensions. It will take a very long time if I speak on that. But a very important point which I wish to bring out is that these great spiritual luminaries of Islam, whether they were 
they came in the person of Khaja Mahmuddin Al-Jisti or in the person of Ghafir Azam Mahmuddin Sayyid Abdul Qadir Al-Jilani or in the person of Shaykh Al-Akbar Mahmuddin Ibn Arabi or any other great among the awliya Allah. <coughs> they were men of knowledge. They were men of higher knowledge. And Islam has demanded this point I would like to make very clear here. Islam has demanded from the Muslims that every Muslim should be possessor of knowledge. As the Holy Prophet has laid down the command Cultivation of knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim man and woman. An illiterate Muslim is a contradiction in terms. An illiterate Muslim is a contradiction in terms. Although this contradiction is found galore, profoundly and abundantly in the Muslim world of today. But it is, it is because of this contradiction that has taken place that we have gone down so much in the comedy of nations. Islam is the religion of knowledge. It is that religion which combines faith with knowledge as I, I was speaking last night at the university. Islam, in Islam, the entire struggle of a Muslim is in the domain of knowledge. He is born to know. And in order to know, he should know himself. As it has been told, and you must have heard it, Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbahu He who knows himself knows God. One who does not know himself cannot know God. And a person cannot know himself unless he knows the environment in which he is born and where he, he, he lives and in which he dies. So the knowledge at all these three levels even from the spiritual point of view, the purely spiritual point of view, is a must in Islam. When you hear, when you read in history about Sayyidina Khaja Mahinuddin al-Jishti Rahmatullahi Ta'ala alayhi wa radiyallahu ta'ala anh, that when he came to Ajmer under the command from the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, and he built up, he established his headquarters for propagating Islam in India. The Hindu ruler there and the Hindus around that area felt a deep anxiety. They couldn't meet and face the challenge of his dynamic personality. So they searched for their greatest yogi who lived in the Himalayas. His name was Dharampal. And uh, this man came and he challenged the Khaja Sahar. He said, you have come here to propagate your religion. But uh, we should have a spiritual dwell so that this, uh, th this matter, this issue may be uh, settled right here. And in that connection he said that I can fly in space without the help of anything else. We want to see as to who can fly higher. And that will settle the issue. It is said that he flew and when he flew, Khaja Sahib ordered his wooden sandal to fly behind him and to hit him and bring him down. How can this thing happen? I'll tell you this. How it does happen and can happen. And it can happen in the case of every human being. A piece of iron cannot fly. Or can it? It cannot fly. It is always under the control of the gravitational force of the earth. Throw it, it will come back. It can't stay. 
But if those laws are found out whereby an aeroplane can be made, then not only the, a sheet of iron can fly, but it can also enable others to fly when they sit there inside. Isn't that so? So, for a person who is ignorant of those laws of nature, whereby it is possible to make an aeroplane and to cause metals to fly in the, in the air and to stay there and to maneuver themselves there as they choose. Similarly, a person who finds out those laws of higher knowledge where this essence of the entire world you see, the human being is the essence of the entire cosmos. The human being is greatest in God's creation and from every point of view it is the most comprehensive thing in God's creation. It has got numerous powers which are inherent in it, which have been placed by God. Numerous types of machines which are there inside the only thing that a man has got to do is to learn how to work those machines. It has got the wireless set. It has got the television set. It has got an engine which is placed in the aeroplane and then it flies. It has got the engine which is placed in the rocket and then the rocket flies. It has got all those things. But all of them are sealed. And on man has been placed the obligation that he should work out. He should pursue the path of knowledge in order to find out as to how a certain mechanism which is there in his personality can be worked and benefits obtained from it. This might sound again to many of you something which is in principle quite correct but which, we, which might be just a fiction. Of course, these events, the karamat of Aliya Allah and the mojadat of Ambiya Allah, the miracles which were given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his prophets, they were also extraordinary or supernatural happenings, so called. And the karamat which were shown by God Almighty through his Aliya, they were also extraordinary happenings which a human being, which an ordinary human being cannot do. Only that person can do who knows this higher science, just as the making of the atom bomb and the hydrogen bomb or the making of rockets or landing on the moon is possible only for those who know the laws at the highest level, the laws of this cosmic world and whatever there is in it, of this mundane world I, I ought to say. Similarly, those people who are the, the spiritual scientists, those who know the laws of the higher world and the higher gear, I might use this word, this is more proper. Uh, this world exists in different gears. As you run your automobile on the first gear and the second gear and the third gear and so on. Similarly, there are gears in the human personality and there are gears in this world, in the constitution of this world. It has been normally geared at a certain level. So you, we all of us behave and move and act as we do. But it will be a very great mistake to suppose that this is the only gear in which the human machine or the order of this world can work. It is a statement which is absolutely ultra-virus. It is a statement which has no foundation. To me, it may work like that. It may appear like that. To an ordinary educated person who has not learned about physics and about the atom and about the powers which are inherent in the atom, for him it may be a fiction that there can be some such thing as the atom bomb which is not larger, bigger than a hen's egg but which can destroy Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 
और फॉर हिम इट विल बी ए फिक्शन देट द एटोमिक फ्यूएल विच इज प्लेस इन दी रॉकेट इज क्वान्टिटेटिवली वेरी स्मॉल बट इट हैज द पावर ऑफ producing energy which can carry the rocket a very heavy thing weighing tons in weight from the earth to the moon and land there and then come back it appears the fiction to a common man who does not know physics who does not know the atom and its those powers which are inherent in it now because the scientists are making a demonstration of this and this thing is coming in the world press therefore everybody says in spite of being ignorant yes that is correct he is ignorant of that science he does not know he cannot make the rocket he cannot make make you see that atomic fuel so in this case also all these things which have happened in history and even now happen those who see them of course they will say they can't deny but those who don't see them they are inclined under the impact of materialism of this age to say oh all this is fiction this is superstition how can it be 